Hi, my name is Raman Mitra. I'm the director of the Memorial Advanced Cardiovascular Institute here at Memorial Hospital in South Bend, Indiana. I'd like to talk to you about a very new and exciting technique that we offer here at Memorial Hospital. Uh, the technique is called cryoablation, which is a very fancy term for eliminating tissue that's causing problems, in this case within the heart, and the way it's eliminated is by freezing the tissue. The condition to which we're applying this technique is called atrial fibrillation, and I'm sure many of you have heard of atrial fibrillation because it is the most common arrhythmia in the world. It typically affects people above the age of 60 or 65, but even people in their 20s and 30s can have atrial fibrillation. What it, atrial fibrillation basically is, is a condition where the heart, instead of beating in a nice, regular manner, starts to quiver, where the upper chamber is quivering. Now, this would be disastrous if the bottom chambers did the same, because then your heart really wouldn't be pumping any blood effectively. Fortunately, in atrial fibrillation, it's the upper or smaller chambers that are affected, but it does cause the heart to beat less efficiently. So it's not a heart rhythm condition generally associated with collapse or death, but it does decrease the efficiency of the heart. I'd consider it very similar to driving a car, say at 60 miles an hour, where your transmission is stuck in second or third gear, so your engine's revved up. And add to that, imagine the engine's knocking. So you could get from here, say, to Indianapolis or Chicago, but your fuel mileage would be terrible, and it wouldn't be a very comfortable ride. And that's basically what's going on with the heart in atrial fibrillation. So most people who have atrial fibrillation will say, you know, Doc, I feel tired, I'm a little short of breath, I just don't have as much energy. But the real risk of the condition is a lot of people don't really know that the upper chamber is irregular, and particularly if you're above the age of 65 or you have high blood pressure or diabetes, having atrial fibrillation puts you at a significantly higher risk for having a stroke. And that's the reason between the loss of efficiency and the increased risk of stroke that as physicians, we tend to be very vigilant to pick up patients, to identify those patients who have atrial fibrillation and to number one, decrease their risk of stroke, which is usually done by treating them with a, a pill that will thin the blood. But the second priority is to try to get the heart back into normal rhythm if possible. This is where cryoablation is a new tool and we are the first in the state of Indiana to offer this, which allows us to identify those areas in the upper chamber, also known as the atria, where abnormal electrical signals arise from and lead to this irregular heart rhythm. Now these signals start from structures called pulmonary veins, and these are generally, most of us have four pulmonary veins. They feed blood from the lungs into the left upper chamber. And for unclear reasons, these veins have a predisposition to forming abnormal electrical impulses that irritate the atrium and cause the atrium to go into fibrillation. This provides us with a potential technique to decrease the likelihood of fibrillation if we can block those abnormal electrical signals from leaving the veins and getting into the atrium. Now normally, the electrical tissue is continuous between those veins and the atrium. So if there was a way that we could insulate the atrium from the electrical signals in the veins, then we could prevent the triggers that initiate or cause the atrial fibrillation. Up until recently, we have been doing this by putting a thin plastic tube in the heart that has a little metal tip on it. And basically, we cauterize the atrial tissue just near the veins in a circular manner. And it would be akin to spot welding to create a circle. And by creating that circle, you scar the tissue and prevent those abnormal signals that feed the fibrillation from getting into the atrium. But the problem with that condition, uh, with that uh, procedure, is that the people who undergo that procedure often will have recurrences, up to half of them will have to go through a second procedure. And the reason we feel that occurs 
is that if you're spot welding, you may leave little gaps and not necessarily realize that at the time of the procedure. And then those gaps can allow the conduction to recur. Cryoablation is a completely different technique, although it also involves a thin plastic tube that is put into the atrium. But in this condition, instead of using heat to spot weld and cauterize around the opening of the vein, we have a balloon on this plastic tube that expands, and we expand it once it's within the heart and push the balloon up against the vein. And if we're making really good contact against the vein, then we can lower the temperature in that balloon to minus 50 degrees centigrade. So instead of heat, we're using sub-zero temperatures to create a continuous circular scar around the vein. And once formed, that blocks those electrical signals from getting from those veins into the atrium. And the initial studies that have been done show that up to 70% of people are free of atrial fibrillation a year after the procedure. So we as a cardiac uh, heart rhythm community, those of us who treat these patients, are very excited about this procedure because up until recently, we haven't been able to come up with a technique that can treat patients quite so effectively. Now, further studies do need to be done in the long term to see whether, say, two years, three years later, are these patients still free of atrial fibrillation. But at this point, we're all quite happy with a 70% success rate at one year. Now, not everybody with atrial fibrillation is a candidate for this technique. This cryoablation or freezing balloon technique works best in those patients who just have abnormal electrical signals in their veins where the heart itself is otherwise quite normal. So in other words, if a patient has high, if you have high blood pressure, if you have diabetes, um, if you have enlargement of your heart or weakness of your heart muscle, the procedure may not work as well. There are other ways, however, we can treat patients who have atrial fibrillation associated with the, these conditions. And some of the individuals who have these other conditions may still be candidates for this condition. But like any medical procedure or technique, it is always important to check with your physician um, to see whether or not you would be an appropriate uh, candidate for the procedure. And of course, if you have any questions about the technique or want further information, you're always free to call the Memorial Advanced Cardiovascular Institute at area code 574-647-8120.